Yeah, let's go ahead. So my name is Steve Reed, been at Microsoft for 25 years, did a lot of uh, mainframe and Unix development before that. And yeah, so the intent here for this particular presentation is just to sort of go over these topics and themes. And, and we're just going to keep it kind of straight and narrow on this presentation. Just wanted to sort of, if you're not familiar or you, or you do have a legacy system, you've probably thought about this, but this is just, you know, my uh, my my guidance as far as approaches that we use here at Microsoft. And before we do that, what I like to do is always start out with the reasons for modernization, right? There's a lot of different reasons. And, and what that ends up doing is determining what pathway towards legacy modernization that you want to go down. And that leads into my second part of this, which is the, you know, the the tried and true pathways that are that are available to you. But we do have a new kid on the block that I wanted to, to, to weave into this story, and it's GitHub Copilot. And so what I wanted to do was weave that into this story, show you a brief demo of how you can leverage this, and then um, give you a sort of an idea of the summary and next steps as far as like what you can actually do to start leveraging this um, tool set right away. So hopefully that sounds good. Um, it's not going to take that long, but let's go ahead and hop into it. Um, the reasons for modern is modernizing your mainframe workloads. You, you can probably think of a lot more than are, are listed here, but these are just some of the ones that I've seen. Um, I'll just sort of go around the 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 the, you know, the board here. Um, one of the ones I just was talking to a customer. They have um, aging technology, an aging platform. They have a platform that's no longer supported, or you know maybe is targeted to be end of life. Another one is there's limited uh, tech talent. There's not a lot of RPG programmers or COBOL programmers out there, especially assembler programmers. So that's another driving force that's that's causing a lot of folks to you know really think about modernizing these applications. And then there's just so many different applications. These these um, typically mainframes, I, I like to refer to them as like an ecosystem or an environment of applications. That's where your app applications live. And there's hundreds, if not thousands of that applications, right? And so some of those actually probably are not even being used anymore. So one of the things that, that you know, what, what we're going to look at today is going in and finding the, the code that's not running. This is very important because it makes the task of modernizing that a little bit easier. So if you look here, you can probably find, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but these are what we see to be the main drivers um, for moderniz modernizing your, your systems. And these are the, the pathways, and we've simple, simplified this from, you might have heard of the Gartner R's. This is, uh, you know, instead of going with that, we wanted to just sort of make this a little more concise. And over here we have Migrate. Migrate um, is essentially taking what you have with very little change and moving that into Azure. So mainframe, you, you might already know this, uh, those are what we would all consider a monolithic architecture, right? So they're... And, and that's a, a good thing and a bad thing, but it's a bad thing when you're um, typically moving into a distributed architecture that relies heavily on networking. So, but there is Migrate, and the, the, uh, the thing I like to point out with Migrate is that you pretty much are just gonna move that monolithic architecture into Azure and it's gonna work. It's the cheapest and usually, you know, most tried and true, but it doesn't really offer you a lot of, a lot of you know, what we would call modernizing advantages. The other one here is Extend, I'm going to hop into this in a little more depth. And then we have transform and re-envision. So let's let's go ahead and take a look at what these actually look like. And I'll, I'll get into that because I've got a slide for each one of these. So from a migrate perspective, we have a monolith, a monolith over here with a bunch of different subsystems that we have to find an analog for over in the Azure world, right, in the cloud world. Um, and that's essentially what we do. Um, we, we take the code, we recompile it. Every artifact, be it a scheduler or you know reporting spooler or anything like that, we have to find the appropriate tool, and then um, we move we move it over. I, I like to say my my favorite saying with this is the magic trick with a migrate is that everyone goes home on Friday, comes back on Monday, everything looks the same. They don't really notice any difference. The users of the mainframe, um, um, and that's kind of the that's kind of the the benefit, right? Um, we're we're not rocking anybody's world. Um, things more or less look the same, but it, um, it still ties you to some kind of an emulation. And you're still, if you were in COBOL, you're still in COBOL um, up in Azure. So the other one that it's getting um, over the, over the last couple of years, I've seen a lot of interest, especially for very large mainframes is extend. 
because Azure has a very good analytic platform and it has a very good DevOps platform. And a lot of folks that, that are running their mainframes want that mainframe to participate in those, those modern type of work or um, features and functionality. So we're, we're, we've been working with IBM to you know, provide a lot of that functionality um, and you know, huge benefits, especially when you're wanting to manage your MIPS and maybe get the dev and test off and run that in, in a virtual machine over in Azure. So we're seeing a lot of um, interest in this, but you 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 still have the mainframe, so it's not as much of a cost effective um, strategy from a cost saving standpoint. Now that we get into transform, transforms a little um, better than, in my opinion, than a rehost. If what you're looking for is a true modernization, um, and I say this because you end up in a modern language like C sharp or Java, whichever you might prefer. So from a modernization standpoint, it's probably leaning more that way. Um, it is a little more risky and it usually costs more. So that's something else that you have to factor in. Um, but and it requires a compiler or a, a um, technology to help you refactor. Hold that thought because we're going to come back. This is, the, this is one of the things that Copilot can really help out with. And then depending on how old the code is and what you want to do um, a lot of times you know architects and developers they just say you know what we just have to rewrite this thing we have to um, let's understand what it's doing so hold that thought but that that's something that copilot can help out with let's understand what this thing is doing and then we can rewrite it um, this usually takes the you know a lot longer it's a lot more expensive but sometimes you know depending on what you're looking for this might be the only thing to do so I wanted to come back to this slide again to kind of show you that um, where Copilot is really going to be able to offer value. Now it can offer value in in the other um, you know uh, pathways over here as well, but what what I am seeing is very much an uptick in leveraging it to do transformation. Um, actually, you know, like a good example here is taking Cobol and rewriting it into Java. Um, and then also re-envisioning. And the, I want to understand this code and um, and perhaps you know help me rewrite it. How, how would I how would I actually go about rewriting this code? And that's we're we're seeing a lot of interest um, from a Copilot GitHub perspective in that. So one thing I wanted to before we get into this, um, and I, I I put this I thought this was a, a great slide because a lot of times people think well I'll just modernize my code and and I'm halfway there and I wanted to point out that it's really a lot more than that right? Um, these are all of the things that we have to consider. Um, when we're modernizing, truly modernizing a legacy system, right? And yes, the code is very important. So we want to make sure that we end up in a maintainable um, code base that's that's in Azure. But we also want to maybe be able to have, you know, better documentation. I know a lot of, I've been involved in, in some situations where there's no documentation at all. I've been involved in some where there's no source code of, uh, at all. So you can imagine being able to have um, something like Copilot um, produce the documentation for a given COBOL code is actually, you know, pretty powerful. And then there's also um, the data element, right? Huge part of this, especially if you're going to migrate this to microservices where, you know, every service technically should have its own, um, you know, particular database. And then we also want to understand the hardware requirements because we're going to have to replicate all that over in Azure, right? And make sure that it's faster and hopefully, you know, more performant than it is on the mainframe. And integration, because a lot of times when you move these systems over, you're still going to have to integrate with um, other applications, um, especially on the mainframe and perhaps maybe, you know, in other clouds in Azure or, you know, wherever that, you know, that, that particular system might be. And then the probably 50% of any given 50 or maybe even more of any given uh, mainframe modernization journey is testing. And so if I can actually have, um, you know, large language model through Copilot help me create test harnesses so that I can speed that up, I'm actually going to, you know, I'm going to rapidly improve my, my performance as far as a deployment standpoint. So let's look at some of the things that we can do. And I'm going to show you this in a demo here, but I just wanted to sort of formally go through this. Um, you know, one of the things that we can do once we've, um, you know, set up our Copilot environment is if I bring up some COBOL code, I, you know, can look at this and if I really know COBOL, I, I can produce the functional requirements and produce a summary for this, but I can also ask Copilot to do it. Um, and uh, it's only getting better as, as we release this. 
And so, you know, being able to actually understand the functional requirements and have a summar summarization of a particular um, code code block is actually very important. Um, another thing that we can do is you'll you'll see this is I can take a COBOL procedural COBOL. Remember that COBOL is procedural and Java and C sharp and these modern languages are all object oriented. Um, so what we need to have is you know a, the ability to bridge that gap and and produce modular Java code, preferably with comments that are is tied back to the COBOL code. And what we want to have happen from a testing perspective is when we test this modern code, we want to have the exact same output pop up for either the COBOL out when, when it comes to the COBOL and with what the generated Java produced. And this is very important, right? Because we do have to make sure that, you know, bridging that gap from procedural to OO did not cause any issues. And this is, um, I'll show you this in just a second. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, part of this is the data component, right? The data component is, is you know, it's 50 to 60%, right, of what, what these applications are all about. So I might have multiple files of data segments. I could even have VCM definitions. Um, I need to be able to translate that preferably into, you know, consolidated DB schema that is typically going to be relational, right, in, in, in a cloud environment like Azure. And so, so at the end of the day, what are, what are the benefits that we're going to, you know, see from this? Um, and, and I took this from one of the uh, co-pilot presentations. I thought it was pretty relevant. Is there actually are some stats behind this? They did a, a quite a lot of survey um, with developers and architects, and what they found out is that really what this allows developers and architects to do is spend more time on designing, brainstorming, collaborating with fellow developers, iterating, and and just planning and designing in general, right? Um, on top of what they're doing, and less time on the on the grunt work, right? The writing the tests, debugging summarizing, producing the documentation, searching the documentation and all that. Um, you know, this is a perfect fit for something like Copilot to go and actually help us augment what we're doing by spending less time on this and more time on the things that arguably are more important. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into a demo here. And what I've done, I have a, I have a, uh, at the very end, I have a, a summarization of how to get started if this is compelling. This is Visual Studio Code. It's free, you can download it. Um, and what I've done is I've um, loaded in some COBOL code. And um, once you have that, that, that COBOL code loaded, then we can actually start leveraging um, Copilot. Now, one of the things that you're gonna need to do if this is intriguing to you is you're, you're going to need to load the extensions. There's two extensions that you're going to need to actually do what I'm doing right here. And it's so easy to set up. Um, you're going to need um, GitHub Copilot and you'll need to um, go up and, and subscribe. There's different levels of, of subscription, but you'll need to subscribe to it. And then you're going to need the um, GitHub chat. Um, which is going to allow you to actually interact and prompt um, the, the GitHub. Um, Copilot, and then you're going to need some source code. You're going to need some some COBOL source code. I got this off the internet. Um, there's, you know, you might have your own. Um, that would be great. But once you have it loaded, you can ask questions like, um, "Please tell me what this code is doing." Like, well, and it's, notice it's thinking. And then it's going through telling you this is a COBOL program. It goes through the different divisions. And I hope I picked something that was useful that's going to be able to go through. And it's going through the different variables that are there. And it's saying that the processing logic of the program, likely procedure division, isn't. So I picked something that didn't have that, um, didn't have actually a procedure division. Let me see if I have one that does. That's where everything happens. Well, since we're on a demo, I'll just go ahead and um, see if I can facilitate this just by telling it to please convert this code to, let's say, Java.
but telling you since it doesn't have a procedure division, it's going to be kind of hard. But this is the classes that it would be for for uh, for the public class for Java if we were to implement that. And if you the way that you would uh, go about, let me see if I can just find. I'm going to give it one more try here. But this is just some source code that I got off the um, off the off the web. Let's see if we can find something that might actually have some procedure logic. Well, we have something. It's a transact file. So let's ask this. Let's thinking about it. And what will happen as you do this, if you keep talking to it, especially about this particular code base, its answers will actually get better and better. Um, and uh, one of the other things is that it's the first thing that it does, this is a, a new feature, is that it when, it when it is looking at this, if it has any copyrights in it, then it will tell you that, you know, if, if you try to translate it, that you actually can't do that. But you see, we got, we found something that's actually doing some, some active code that has a procedure division. So let's, um, let's convert this to C sharp. Of course, it tells you that it's not a straightforward process because what I was just saying that we have a you know procedural language going into an object oriented language, um, but you can see and actually what you can do you can take this and test it and go and test it and this is where you can do the side by side testing. So, anyways, that's what I wanted to show you. Um, you can sort of just use your imagination on how you could, you know, leverage this, but it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Um, and let's go back to the slides because I did did have one other slide as far as summary and next steps. Um, so, hopefully, this this gave you an idea of the ways that you can approach um, legacy modernization. Um, and and GitHub, I think, plays a key role in that, especially when it comes to refactoring and and re-engineering. It's so easy to get started. Download um, either you know your favorite Visual Studio code or Visual Studio. You do need to install the extensions um, and then open a repository of your favorite code or your legacy code and, and pretty much you're off to the races. Um, the other things that I wanted to just sort of leave with you is start with the end in mind as far as what your vision and your pathway is of, of modernization. Um, do you want do you want to see a world with no COBOL or, or is COBOL fine, but you just want to actually deploy that COBOL into perhaps like containers? There's, that's another one that's really, really popular with customers these days. And then also engage Microsoft and, and your partners to, to help you out. Most, most partners are, you know, very well. They've been working with Copilot since it came out. So they're, you know, very well along that journey as well. Um, and. Pretty much that's all I wanted to uh, leave with you and I will pass the, the baton back to Ron.